Hello. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to do something that was um, a request that I had. So the commenter requested to demonstrate how to enable a particular quest alias once one of the main story quests reaches a particular stage. So I thought that was quite a good tutorial because what I can essentially do is demonstrate the principle of using your modded quest to detect story progress so when the player reaches a certain point in the story you can have something happen in your quest and the reason i would do this with a separate quest is that i i would advise or i personally think that you should never edit the vanilla scripts because the, the vanilla scripts are all stored separately to the creation kit which means if you edit one of these scripts it will make a permanent edit and in particular because um a lot of mods require you to have archive and validation on so when your modded script placed in your direct in your modded script directory will override the vanilla script even if your mod is disabled so i never touch vanilla scripts if you want something to happen when something happens in the story it's best to create a script that can detect that stage being set so that's what i'm going to do and when I normally do the stage where I demonstrate it working in the game, that's going to be a little difficult to do because I most of my saves are quite far into the game. So what I've done is I've created a stand-in quest, which is going to we're going to imagine is the story. So I've called it tutorial underscore stand-in quest, but it doesn't really matter that I've um, created a fake quest or anything because for the principle, the syntax you're going to use, you should be able to apply to detect progress made in any quest in the game. So this tutorial stand-in quest, all it has is stage 5, the stage has been set and this is going to be the stage that we're going to be detecting with our quest. So first of all I'm going to create a new quest. Now you can do this, you can do this in a quest that you've already got running or you can create a hidden kind of background shadow quest to do this, you can kind of do this in whatever way you want. So I'm just going to call it tutorial underscore detection quest. I'm just going to leave all the priorities and start game enables as they are, because we're going to want it to be start game enabled. So our detection quest now, we're going to go over to script, and I'm going to add a new script. New script, okay. And I'll just leave it like that. Oh, that was silly. You've got to give it a name. So I'm going to call it tutorial underscore detection script. Make sure it's unique or you'll get that error message I got. So I've not been well recently, so I wasn't paying full attention there. Cancel that because we're going to manually type all the stuff in. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a property to point to our quest. And this is going to be the quest whose stages you're going to want to track. So I'm going to go quest property. And I always give my properties the same name as the item, but you can call it whatever you want. Tutorial underscore stand in quest. Auto and const because we don't need to do any. We don't need. We want it to be constant, and we're not, you know, not going to change the default value. So first thing we're going to want to do then is we're going to want to check if a player has already met that um, that requirement. So if a player installs your mod partway through the game and they've already reached the point in the story that you want your particular item to appear, you're going to want to just skip straight ahead. So I'm going to write event on quest init which is going to mean this event will run as soon as the quest is initialized which because we've got it start game enabled will be straight away if tutorial underscore stand in quest dot get stage done so we're going to be checking if the stage is done has been has been previously completed but we want our object to appear on so it was five equals one and what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to use it to set a stage within our own quest. You could do the enabling from here, or you can do it in a quest fragment. It's, it's really up to you. I'm just going to go set stage 5. So that will set our own stage 5 when um, stage 5 is done. However, if it hasn't been done, we are going to need to register to detect it being done. So cer certain objects have certain events, you know, certain scripts have events that are, that belong to them, but you can set up other objects to detect events that belong to other scripts. So for example, the on activate, you can't activate a quest, but I could set up my quest 
to receive the on activate event from a particular object. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this quest up to receive the um, on stage set event. So I'm going to register for remote event. Now this is where I have to remember the syntax, so I'm going to have to do a cut here. Um, it is the name of our quest, or the, the name of the quest, the property which is referring to the quest, so it's this up here. Then in inverted commas, um, on stage set, end if, end event. There we go, got it right in one. Usually I forget which order these go around in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to want to set up our quest to actually do something when it receives the event. So I'm going to do event, and then now we have to write quest in front of it. So if I was receiving uh, an event from an actor, I would write actor dot blah blah blah. If I was receiving it from an object reference, I'd write object reference. So we're receiving this event from another quest. Quest dot on stage set. And we need extra syntax in this as well. So normally the on stage set just has the stage ID and the item ID. But now we need to also include a property which is going to point to the quest. So you just write quest. And we can, we can call it anything we want. But I'm going to call it sending quest. Comma. And then it's an integer next. And that is, again you can call it whatever you want. But I'm going to follow the documentation way of doing it. Which is AUI stage ID. And then another integer which is AUI item id i'm just going to put end event just so i can save and make sure yep i've done my syntax correctly so these are all the different properties that will be sent along with the event so i'll explain that as we're going along so now we're going to write if sending quest so that is this property so that will be the quest which is sending the event to us equals tutorial underscore stand in quest so what that's going to be is if we have detected that stand in quest has had any stage set we will move on to the next set of arguments and because we're only listening for stand in quest we're only going to get stand in quest but i always put that condition in anyway just in case so if, if a sending quest is stand in quest that's good that's what we want but now we want the particular stage because it has to be a specific point so if AUI, we have to write it in, right? AUI stage ID equals 5. Now we're going to do our thing. So we're going to set stage 5. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unregister for this event because we actually don't need to be listening for it anymore. Because all I want to do is set stage. I mean, if you want to keep listening because you want to check for multiple stages, you can do. But I'm going to unregister because we don't need to keep doing it anymore. End the if. End the if, and I've already written end event there. I'm just going to leave these extra lines. There you go. So now what's going to happen is, when we receive the event, if the sending quest, which is the piece of data that we've written in here, is tutorial underscore stand in quest, which it always will be, uh, we'll go to the next stage, and if the stage ID equals 5, which it could be anything, it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it could be any number that's been put, but if it's 5, we're going to set our stage 5. If it isn't 5, we'll just carry on. Nothing else will happen. And then we'll get rid of our event. So I'm going to close that. And I'm just going to fill in that property. And because I've given the property the same name as the quest, if I autofill, it is just going to autofill for me like that. OK. OK. Save. So at the moment, it actually doesn't do anything. I've created this detection quest. And it actually does absolutely sod all. So I'm going to create a new stage, 5. And I'm going to fill that in. So now we at least have a stage. But once again, it doesn't do anything. And you can do basically whatever you want. You know, what did you have in mind when you were doing this? Did you want to just have a piece of dialogue become available? Do you want to have an objective show up? Do you want to have an item enable? I'm a particular requesting uh, person said he wanted to have um, an item get enabled. So I'm just going to follow that. I'm going to do it in an interior. I'm just going to choose an interior and I'll do a cut. So again, the thing with this is there are so many different ways I could enable a particular object when I reached a stage, but I'm almost not sure what to do. 
but I'm going to show you literally the simplest, most basic way. So I'm just going to put something in. I kind of want to be something distinct so we know that it's there and then not there. Um, let's put this there, turpentine or something in the thing. Let's say we want to do this and put it on this top shelf. And I'm just going to double click on it now. It's going to it's gonna um, keep clicking the blooming dust. There we go. And we're going to make it initially disabled because but, you know, we want it to not be there initially. We only want it to be enabled when the quest starts. So now we're going to go into our detection quest because this is the one where we're going to have the alias that gets enabled. So I'm just going to right click new reference alias. And I'm just going to create a super simple alias. I'm just going to call it object. It doesn't matter. Um, allow disabled. If you don't click allow disabled and your object is disabled, the alias won't fill and your quest won't start. Specific reference, select a forced reference. Turpentine rare. Okay. No, I always say no for this because I don't like to mess around with vanilla locations because sometimes I can mess up other stuff. So I just, again, it's it's not the cleanest way because it does make it a persistent reference, but for the, for something so tiny like this, I literally don't think you're going to actually see a difference. So we're going to jump into our detection quest, go over to quest stages, and we're going to create a property in here as a property. And our property is going to be a reference alias because it wants to, we want to enable an alias. And I always prefix my aliases with the word alias, just as a reminder. So alias underscore object. So the alias is called object and it is an alias because aliases are treated uh, in terms of what functions we can run on them are different to object references. So I wouldn't want to accidentally mix myself up with that. So now I'm going to write alias underscore object and we can't just enable it directly because if you enable it directly, it's not going to work because the alias itself does not exist in the world. The, you know, it's just uh, it's the object that exists, not the alias. The alias just holds the object. So I'm going to write get ref. So what that's going to do is it's going to get the reference which occupies the alias because that's what we want to run the script on. Get ref dot enable compile. There we go. So now what's going to happen is we are going to be listening out for the stage from the stand in quest and this is standing in for story mode. So if the quest if a stage has already been set in our detection quest as we know we immediately skip straight to stage five. If it hasn't been set we're gonna start listening for the stage on stage set. So when our stage tells us stage five has been set, we set stage five and when stage step five is set we enable the object. So West Everest Estate so one is our cell. So I'm going to jump into the game now and demonstrate how that works. Okay, so we're in the game and our quest should be running. So if we go get stage tutorial, God, tutorial underscore detection quest, it's currently zero because the stage in the standing quest hasn't been set. Yep, they're both zero. So now, if I set stage tutorial underscore stand in quest five like that, and if I get the stage of detection quest, as you can see, it's now become five on our detection quest. So if I were to coc west Everett state 01, the reason I put it in this interior is because I usually don't like enabling items that are in the same cell as the player because first of all there's a possibility the player will see it which will be a bit immersion breaking and second of all I don't know if it actually can but I'm sometimes wary that it might not enable if the player is in the cell I actually don't know if that's just a weird superstition of mine or if it actually happens but here we are you can actually see the turpentine is now there industrial solvent it's actually called in the game but it's called turpentine rare there we go industrial solvent picked it up job done I may as well load back in at the beginning and show you it um, not being there the first time around. I mean, I'm sure you trust you trust me, but I haven't cheated. You can see the stage getting set, but I'll load back in anyway and show you it not being there.
as you can see, it's not there. I also have a feeling there's about to be a fight. Oh, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, as you can see, the turpentine isn't there. Actually, what happens? Will it actually... If I just set the stage, will it appear before... Yeah, it appears before very eyes. So my superstition doesn't even matter, probably. I usually don't like to do it anyway, because obviously it appears in front of us. It looks weird. There you go. So that's how that works. And you can apply that principle to anything you can detect any stage of any quest and do anything you want you could have an objective appear you could have an, an npc appear but if you want an npc to appear instead of get ref you have to write get actor ref you can literally do anything you want as long as you understand that principle of the remote events and you know and and, and how you know you can listen for uh, for other events being set then you can pretty much do anything it's quite a powerful tool it just means you don't have to mess around with like editing the, the story quest or anything like that because i'm just really wary of doing that you can do it um but you have to make sure you pack it in an archive and delete the loose version so that it's not overwritten anyway i'm rambling now anyway what i was gonna say is thank you for watching hopefully that was useful and goodbye